Hey guys, it's Kate. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to give you a few of my favorite organization tips for you to be successful during your nursing shift. The main one being a report sheet. And this is what people call their nurse brains. If you ever hear a nurse running around going, I lost my brains, I lost my brain, I lost my brain. That's what she's talking about. She's not talking about her actual like mind thing. She's talking about the little pieces of paper that she holds in her pockets. Now, in nursing school, we had to create our own brains, and I used some they had at the hospital that they already pre-made, and then I was taking different information, and throughout my time in clinicals, I built my own brain, and I'm gonna show you what that is. And it's just a way to take report efficiently, give report efficiently, and then also keep track of your day so you're not running around in just pure chaos. So we're gonna go down and flip to a top-down version and I'm gonna show you what my brain is. Mine is all typed out and how to fill it out and why I use that certain one. So let's get to it. Okay, so this is what my report sheet looks like. I use it as a half page over here and I can fit two patients on one sheet. Um, what I like to do is I actually take it and I fold it in half. Try to match it up as evenly as I can. Sometimes I'll keep it in my pocket just like this so that way all the patient information is on the inside. But what I really like to do is fold it in half two ways, make sure I really get that crease, and then just rip it right down the middle. So now I have two sheets, one for each patient. And what I will do is I will take them and I will take a stapler and staple them together. Now I normally have four to six patients, so I will have a little packet of this in my pocket and I'll put them in order of room number. So I'm gonna go through and show you each part of it and then how I fill it out. So the top is gonna be the name of the patient. And I like to put the full name of the patient starting with the first name because I like to be on a first name basis with my patients. I don't like to forget their names. Over here I have the age, their gender, room number, code status, and what, who's, who their doctor is. So at night we only have one hospitalist at my facility and then during the day there's four hospitalists so it's good to know which hospitalist they have or if they're on a specialty. And then right here I put their diagnosis right underneath their name. The HPI is their history of present illness. Some people put CC which is chief complaint. I like to know what happened leading up. So. Why did they come to the ER? Why did they call it an ambulance? Things like that. So I'll put that in here. And then here is their history. So things like hypertension, diabetes, what other comorbidities can they have in there? So after I take report, this is generally kind of an idea, an example of what it would look like. This is not an actual patient. This is just a fictional patient that I made up just for this example. So we have Jane Doe here. She's a 67 year old female. She's in room two. Uh, she's a DNR. I use multicolored pens. I specifically like these uh, Papermate ones um, to color coordinate things. So DNR is super important, so I make sure that it's red. History of the present illness. She had some swelling and some chest pain, so she went to the ER where they took a chest x-ray where they found pulmonary edema. She has a history of diabetes and hypertension and CHF. She also has some coronary artery disease in which she has some stents placed. Right now she has a fully placed in and a peripheral IV that's running normal saline at 100 mils an hour. So next I'll go into these next boxes. These are the things that I look up on my patient. So since I work the night shift, my first vital signs is gonna be a PM vital signs. And then I'll compare that to the morning vital signs of the next day. So this is kind of my timeline throughout the night. I'm a type A person that really likes check boxes. So I made this little checklist of things that my facility specifically likes us to have documented. So our Muse score, pain, which I'll get during my first assessment, education and our care plan review, and a shift note at the end. This box is my most important box. It's my to-do list for the day. So what is the patient going on that night? Do I need to change fluids? Do I need to call the doc? Everything's gonna go into this box here. This next one is the labs. And I'll, when I first come on that night, I'll, I'll check off this box for the timestamp to show that I did look at the labs. And I'll fill this out in pencil because labs are usually drawn the next morning. I wanna make sure that I have everything up to date as much as possible. If there's something specific that I'm tracking, I'll put it in this space over here and keep a trend going because I might have this patient for up to three nights. Now for doing a report, I really like these multicolored pens. This way I can have eight different colors with me by only carrying two pens. 
black I'll use for uh, when I get report. Blue is everything I'm going to tell the doctor. Red is super important, such as code status or critical values. Green is my to-do list. Purple is next drug times. Pink is kind of whatever I feel like it, and same with the light blue, but usually the blues I keep as doctor notes. So I keep these two, so I keep these two pens in my pocket as well as a pencil. So here's an example of those middle boxes after I filled them all out. So I have my vital signs here. I've gone through to my Muse score, and I know that I'm going to have to do a repeat chest x-ray, and the patient also has an echo planned. I did my labs for the day and saw that my potassium was only 2.9, so I know I'm going to call the doctor to get replacement potassium for them. These next six boxes is all of my assessment. So neuro, cardiac, respiratory, GI, muscle, and GU. Now something I can also get during report is if they're on telly and what their rhythm has been, as well as if they're AC and HS. Now this fictitional patient has diabetes, so they will be AC, HS. And then down here is where I'll put all of my meds that I'm gonna have to pass throughout the day, and as well as orders that I have on this patient specifically. So now I have my so now I have my shift assessment all filled out. I like to fill out my report and my shift assessment in black, so that way I know that that was my baseline that I'm gonna be working from. So the patient was alert and oriented times four. Their cardiac sounds were a little bit distant, but their telly shows that they're in normal sinus rhythm. Respiratory, they have diminished base, bases and they have shortness of breath, but they are on room air. Their oxygen is obviously higher than the 92% that's ordered by the doctor. They have a decreased appetite and their cardiac, they have a cardiac diet. They don't know when their last bowel movement was, so we're going to watch for that today. Um, they have a Foley catheter and they had 1500 out during the day shift. That's quite a lot, so it probably explains the 2.9 potassium level. And then in their muscle and integumentary, they have generalized weakness and I didn't put any skin issues down because they didn't have any. So the little ACHS, they have a little checkbox for when they need to get their blood sugars checked and get insulin. They have one, two, three, four little slashes, one for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then bedtime. And the last one that was given was for dinner. Their blood sugar was 260 and on the sliding scale, it was given five units. I also write this one in pencil because if I have this patient for more than one day, I will reuse the same sheet and just erase it and put the next days in. So now I know that I just need to do HS. Over here is where I have all of the med passes. I usually only write down that day, so up until midnight. So I know that between 9 and 10, I need to give Lispro, which is insulin, IV Lasix, and that potassium replacement. I also know they're having some pain. So the nurse last gave Norco, and the next time I can give it is at 2300 hours. I put this little checkbox here to show if I did a reassessment of their pain or not. So that way when I know that I erase this and put the next time, did I come back and reassess their pain? So that is my full nurse brain. And I'll keep this per patient and I'll fold it up and stick it in my pocket a lot of the times because it fits really well that way. And then I just have one and then another. I am trying to find some other ways to make my life a little bit more efficient. I do like having half sheets. I don't like full sheets per patient. It's just too much paper and I feel like it's a lot of wasted paper too since I write so small. So if you have any ideas as a nurse who's been out there for a while, please let me know. I would love to know how you keep yourself organized on a shift. That's super crazy. At night I have up to six patients so it's really nice to have something that's efficient and will work. Um, like I said, I usually fold this up and put it in my pocket or I just carry around my clipboard with me and stick it in there and it fits perfectly inside. So yeah, leave me down in the comments below if you have any ideas of how to make my life a little bit easier. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this little organization video. Please leave a comment down below of other nursing videos you'd like to see. Also, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos every week and so hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of them. Check out my Instagram, Lyrical Fit Chick, for all of my organization, fitness, lifestyle, all those other fun little events. And other than that, I will see you in the next video. Bye!